Happy Equinox, it's spring. It's the first day of spring. It is officially the first day of spring. Last night was the Equinox, so we had the equal daylight length to night length from here on out. Well, obviously until the next Equinox. We are getting longer days than we have nights which is well I would say it's pretty exciting but when I was editing the plot tour that I did on Saturday I realized I say exciting way more than it needs to be said or maybe not that it needs to be said because I do actually I mean I I'm fully in with those words it is exciting <laughs> everything's exciting sorry I'm going to try and expand my vocabulary away from just Oh, it's so exciting. I'm excited about this. That's exciting. This is really exciting. <laughs> anyway, it's happened again that we've only got one day up here. Um, I did come up here yesterday, so it's Sunday today. I did come up here yesterday to film the plot tour, which I thought was just gonna be a really quick, you know, just a walk around, whiz home. Mum had a yoga class, so I was gonna whiz home, edit it up onto YouTube, and then after lunch, get back up here and do some work. But what ended up happening is upload took forever and then the processing took forever. And basically what ended up happening was I was, after editing it, I was farting around with the blooming computer for about three and a half hours after the time that I thought I'd be up here. So yeah, but uh, when I finally did get it all sorted, we did come up here, but it was literally just, I didn't do any filming. But we did get three more posts in, you know, where I was putting them behind the pond. So we just came up. It was a really pretty warm evening. It was cloudy all day yesterday, but it was pretty warm. And yeah, so we just came up here of an evening. I didn't even get the camera out. I just just did some stuff. I came up, dug some holes, listened to the birds sing, watched the light fade. It was pretty nice, actually. It was pretty nice. So... Essentially, filming is just the one day again this week. This working malarkey, really. I'm not cut out for it. <laughs> but we have masses and masses and masses to do. We're going to be planting some potatoes. We've already got the Red Duke of York and the Accord in. Um, they're in bags currently in the greenhouse, but not for any reason other than we haven't got them out yet. But what we have also got is... We've got Kezia. To go in we're also growing a sagita um curs pink and apache can't remember i've got them i've got it written down somewhere um but yeah so we're going to be getting all the rest of the potatoes into the bags today into the greenhouse and then we're going to kind of space them out yeah loads to do and it means that because i got those posts in last night it means that we can really kick off kick off off with getting the kind of the featherboard panels up the back there and yeah basically it's all go it is all go and we've got lunch I mean it's only noodles again <laughs> I was gonna bring soup like normally I'd make some soup or something to bring up here but uh, we don't have any bread because the sourdough starter is misbehaving at the moment so we're breadless and like soup without bread I'm not up for that so it's noodles Oh, we've got so much greenery up here. Like, um, I don't know if you've watched the plot tour, but if you saw the plot tour inside the polytunnel and in the covered bed, so lush. And like all the chard is just like churning out leaves like there's no tomorrow. So we'll probably have chard and various bits of sprouting stuff in our noodles today. But basically, I'm just going to go and get on with it because we've got masses to do. And I can see mum out the window is standing in the greenhouse, desperate to tell me what temperature it's got to. <laughs> I'm off.
Okay, let me introduce you to our five posts. It was meant to be only three. We only bought three, but then we found two. Got this one little shorty chap, and then next up was kind of a medium-sized one, and then they go in, like, size order. So it goes really short, medium short, very tall, slightly shorter, a bit shorter. So mum and I are going to be doing two jobs at once here, which is going to be interesting to film. But we've got so much to do, we can't really just kind of do one at a time. So mum is going to be putting up the potatoes while I put the featherboarding on the posts. Don't you feel me trying to get around the corners because I'm useless. First thing to do for the potatoes is mix up the mix. So we've never grown potatoes in bags before or in pots other than a bit of an experiment last year. Uh, but it wasn't on a big scale. And so we are mixing up the compost to use inside the bags. Three-way mix of spent compost. So this is the compost that was left over from growing the sweet potato. I say growing the sweet potatoes. There wasn't much sweet potato action happening. But the plant for the sweet potatoes was in some of this compost. And so were the melons. So they've it's been quite kind of sucked dry. But it's going to be a fairly good medium. So we're going to mix that. Uh, equal parts with our own compost which is this stuff which is super rich really great we're really happy with it this year and then another third is going to be horse manure so that's the mix and then we will feed them during the year not an enormous amount but we will be feeding them with comfrey feed so i think that's going to work really quite nicely part of the reason we're using spent compost is because we've got it and we've got a lot of it and we don't have a great deal of compost to go in the bags and we're filling about 12 bags so that's quite a lot of compost and i've used spent compost for things like this before and it works perfectly okay So while mum is getting on with the potatoes and mixing the soil, I'm just going to sort out these featherboards. So like I said, we bought three posts and I bought one kind of pack of featherboard that I was going to put between. But since we found the other posts, we're going to make it a bit longer. It means I'm not going to be putting as many featherboard across, which I don't think is going to be a problem because we're going to grow stuff up here. And I don't want this to be a massive kind of uh, barrier at the edge. It's not to keep anybody out. It's nothing like that. It is just because we're trying to hide the school. And also we're trying to gain a bit of privacy like it used to be before they chopped all the fence down along the side of the school. So we just want to bring that kind of feeling of being enclosed back again. And we're going to grow some evergreens up here and try and make it a bit of a wildlife haven. So it's going to be quite dense and this catches the sun really nicely so it'll be warm and yeah I think it's going to work out really nice. So each of the feather boards is one meter eighty wide so I've spaced my posts so that they just fit nicely between them. I'm also doing a mixture of the feather boarding being on the back side and the front side of the posts looks a little bit weird at the moment but I think when it's all kind of grown in it's going to provide a lot more habitat for things to kind of burrow in and get inside it.
that's the last one. So yeah, I think we've spaced them quite nicely and I think it's going to look fantastic when we've got a lot of stuff growing up here. It's enough of a barrier without it kind of cutting everything out. So my next job is I've got a couple of bird boxes to put up that my dad has made. So we've got two. One of them is a sort of classic robin style nest, which has just got an open front. And the other one is more of a blue tit one. Lovely. Okay, and out again. Been standing on the flowers. A one. Right, that is one box up. Next one is the blue tip box, which is a much more kind of classic shaped bird house with the flip up lid and the hole in the front. Bird boxes are fascinating actually in terms of like what size hole for different species and everything. And I'm planning to talk a lot more about this next week, but for the moment, I'm just getting them up. I'm really pleased with that. I've got a metal ring that's going to go around the outside of that hole, um, but I haven't actually got it on there yet, so uh, that's still something I need to get done. Okay, so going back to mum, we just rolled the tops over on these bags and stabbed a couple of holes in the bottom because they're going to need drainage. And mum's just filling up a couple of inches at the bottom of each bag. And then we're putting them where we're going to keep them, which is along the side here with the arches. So they get really good sun here and they're going to go under the arches. But that's because there's still the space in the middle. It's not going to hamper the picking of the beans that are going to be up the arches. And also because the sun is coming in from that side, the arches aren't going to shade them. So this is... Have you drawn a map? Pardon? Have you drawn a map? I haven't, but I will. Okay. I haven't put anything in that one yet. So once you've got a couple of inches in the bottom of the bag, we're just putting the potatoes straight in and covering them over. And then as they grow up, just like with normal potatoes, as they grow up and they kind of emerge, you just cover them up. And then as we go, we'll slowly roll these bags up and they'll get into tall bags. Somebody said to me in the comments the other day about the ink leaking from these bags, but some of these bags we've had for about seven years and they haven't even faded in the sun, so that's not really going to be a problem. And they've been lining the actual compost bin itself and they haven't um, leaked any ink into them, so I can't see it's going to make any difference to the potatoes. So, yeah, in these squares is where the beans are going to go and flowers, so it's going to be kind of alternating beans, potatoes, flowers all the way up here. I think it might be time for some lunch.
So I was in here with the plot tour the other day, uh, what, two days ago, and yeah, everything's looking really pretty lush in here. And I think today we're going to have some this Lucillus chard in the noodles. It's a great chard, this actually. I'm really impressed with it. Even the ones outside, it's not just this one that's been grown in the poly. It's really super, super soft. So it kind of cooks down like proper spinach, you know, um, how it kind of almost disintegrates, but you get great flavour from it. Guess who forgot the bowls? So it's going to be mugs. Not ideal, but it'll do. short and wide or tall and skinny they've got the same in successful lunch despite the um lack of bowls but you know it's noodles it's not exactly um eating at the ritz is it mm. now it's all about the digestive biscuits so we got quite a lot done this morning didn't we um we've had got those nest boxes up i'm going to talk about a bit more about them in a minute and i'll show you what i've done with them but the next thing that is on my list for this afternoon is to sort this bed out that's right outside the front of the shed that I asked your opinion on like can't remember how many options there were like five options was there anyway total surprise the one that's won is the d-shaped one which was also number d number d you know what I mean uh option d uh has won so I'm well surprised about that I wasn't expecting it I thought that was just a bit of a silly one but but basically, in terms of numbers, it's all over the rest of them. So that's the one we're doing. So I'm going to modify it ever so slightly because uh, when I just kind of plonked those down, I hadn't kind of worked out how much space we needed to get to the leaf mould bin or to get around to the chickens and stuff. So I'm just going to do a bit of kind of jostling with that. But we're going to put the woodland garden in there. Now, I've got some hellebores which have been donated from two different allotments up here, actually, which I'm really excited about getting in. So that's the first thing. But we're also going to get some wild garlic in there and some ajuga, some snowdrops, that sort of thing, and have a bit of a woodland garden. So pretty excited. That's my afternoon job after I've eaten this biscuit. Um, yeah. God, I'm stuffed. <laughs> So this is the state I left it in, like when I've been mocking up all those different shapes and this is where it's going to curve round and actually it works quite well because this is the path that we normally take out of the shed going this way. This is me demonstrating nicely.
well chaps, I think you knew what you were talking about because I thought it was going to look a bit silly, but actually it works perfectly. I'm well happy with that. Right, next up, I've got a couple of hellebores. Let me show you. So they are just uh, seedlings from self-seeded hellebores and I've got another one around the corner, which is just a little tiny one. I'm gonna put them in and I've also got some, let me get them. I've got a mystery bucket, which has got obviously some white hyacinths in it and some daffs of some sort, but I don't know what they are. And I've got these ones, which are definitely canaliculatus. But they haven't flowered for two years now, so and I got them off a man called Latus. So I really want them to flower. I'm gonna get them in at the bottom there. Okay, so first thing to do is to get this bag of horse manure on here. These trees have been pretty badly treated over the last couple of years because they are right underneath. We used to have the oak tree that's up behind them used to hang down right over the top of them. And so they had real problems with light but I've taken masses of the lower branches off the oak tree and so we've got loads more light down here now. So yeah, gonna get them a really good top dressing of this horse manure and uh, try and feed them up. Because they're beautiful trees and they have really, really lovely apples when they do produce some. So um, yeah, looking forward to getting this all looking spectacular. Now for the exciting bit. Exciting again, I said it again, didn't I? I'm just gonna plant straight through this. And the first thing to go in is gonna be the hellebores. There's a couple of seedlings in the same bundle, but they are really, really tightly packed together. And I don't think I'd be able to separate them out without damaging them, because they're really tiny. So I'm gonna plant them as a clump and then Maybe next year or the year after when they've beefed up a bit, I will dig them up and then separate the clump out. Gorgeous. And then I've got this absolutely teeny tiny one, which is just gonna go in on its own over here. It's really, really small, really small. So I'm gonna separate this uh, box out as well. These were actually rescued from when we moved the shed down here. These were growing under the tree at the back and we were putting the shed on top of them. So I just dug them out and jammed them in that pot and they've all survived. So marvelous, they're getting their new home now after, well, what, a year of sitting in that pot. And these are the canaliculatus. So these pots were potted up for sale as like a spring table decoration and they weren't sold. So I took them home with me, but they are just way too jammed in there really for one season only. And they've been sat in that pot for two years now and unsurprisingly, they haven't flowered. So I'm just separating them out and kind of planting them in loose clumps across this whole area. And hopefully that's gonna encourage them to flower because they really are the most beautiful flowers. Well, I think that looks absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, really pleased. Well done, chaps. That was good, um, good voting on the D. I think I'm gonna get some snowdrops in here too. The white looks really nice because it's quite shaded. The white just absolutely pings. And obviously we don't know what color the hellebores are gonna be. And this little chap, I've stuck a lolly stick in there just so it doesn't just completely get lost. And it's not gonna be long until we've got blossom above them.
Okie dokie chaps, we've been here a long time today. It's absolute bliss. Can you hear the birds? They're going mental. Um, right, what am I doing? Next job on the list today is to plant out some pak choy. I really apologise if there's any wind on the microphone, but I don't have any kelp cut. You see? bit windy. These are my pak choy. They are in those jiffy pellets that I've been using and they look like this. They're really leggy again like the lettuces but I'm perfectly happy they look really healthy on top. So I had quite a lot of comments about whether or not I was going to take the jiffy pellet bags off and particularly when I planted the lettuces I didn't. But the lettuces are going to be in the ground for not that long. We're just going to eat them so it's not a major deal. They don't need a massive root structure. I will probably take them off these. However, let me show you this. Hang on, let me get a bit closer. Can you see the little, oh God, my hands are asleep. The little bumps on that stem, if I put it against black background, dark background, no, black background. Can you see them? They're gonna be roots. So even if I left the bag on, I'm going to plant it all the way up to its neck here. It's going to form roots along that spine because anything under the seed leaves, for some plants, they'll go all the way up the stem if you plant them really deep. But for most things, up to the seed leaves, they will produce forever. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to plant them right the way up to there. So that won't be a problem. And um, I'm going to water them first because they're a bit dry in these jiffy pellets and then I wouldn't try cut the jiffy pellets off while they're this dry because it's just gonna fall apart. But I'm gonna soak them and then cut them off, see what it's like. I might plant them with, might plant them without, depending on how easily they cut off. These are the slightly larger ones actually, and they cut much easier. The, um, but they're also a bit thinner. The little tiny ones that I had, you know, I had two sizes. Um, the little tiny ones were both really difficult to get off and much thicker. So I don't think the roots would have grown through them. So it's a bit, not so great. But these size, really good. Right, I'm going to soak them. Now, so look how easily these snip. Like, these are a really blunt pair of scissors and they snip so easily. You can see the roots have been coming through a bit. Um, but yeah, I think I'm just going to chop these off. They come off so easily, I may as well. So planting deep, I'm using this uh, really long skinny trowel, which is my favorite trowel, uh, particularly good if you've got leggy seedlings. So nice deep hole and then place it in and just backfill around your plant. Well, so firming in, but without crushing the stem. Something to bear in mind when you are planting deep, especially with things like this with jiffy pellets. Essentially what I've got is a weighted, like a stone on the end of a really delicate string. And if you make your hole and you hold the top half of your plant and you drop your wet jiffy pellet in, it's gonna snap. If you're not like judging your depth absolutely perfectly, it can just snap your stem right off. So. Just be really delicate and make sure you don't hold it by the top of the plant and you just lower the jiffy pellet in and then hold the top part to the surface rather than the other way around. We're gonna have a couple of chilly nights coming up, not freezing or anything like that, but going down to about four. So I'm gonna move the portable little plastic cover over these guys just to give them a bit of help. This cover is so old and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty broken, but it still does the job. Okay, 
Right, we are just about to head home, but before we go, we're gonna make the first picking of rhubarb this year. So this is the outside rhubarb. It's just so far behind last year, it's unbelievable. But we're gonna be picking some of the four stuff, which is under here, which is looking all right. I mean, last year we were picking this on the 8th of February, and this on the 20th of March is the first picking of this year. That's extraordinary. So far behind. But yeah. I'll see you tomorrow, chaps. Hello, it is now Monday and I'm up here utilizing the shed for editing purposes. Um, I couldn't be inside today. The sky is just, there's, like i can see a couple of clouds at the most it's absolutely gorgeous and um we're not really up here to do anything i'm just up here to edit and to do my final bit of blurb really so i'm actually going to sit in the shed to do that because it's pretty bright out here there we go let me plonk you on here yeah, so that was another week. Um, it's, I think it's gonna work out this way for quite a few weeks that most of the vlog is just gonna be filmed on the one day or maybe one and a half days elsewhere because um, I was thinking I had the Easter holidays coming up because I should have had the Easter holidays coming up. But last week I got an email saying that the college actually isn't closing for Easter because the students have had such a, um, such a messed up, term that uh, as part of a goodwill gesture they are going to open over easter which i'm not ecstatic about i can tell you but you know it's all right but i had kind of planned that i was going to have however many weeks it is like two and a half weeks off over easter but i'm not going to now i'm just going to have the bank holiday uh, for the friday and the monday off which is still you know it's still pretty good but it's not exactly two and a half weeks is it um yeah so slight change of plans there so but i think for quite a while this is going to be a uh a sunday affair because i just don't seem to have any other time <laughs> of any sort none just nothing no time so yeah a major thing to mention this was vlog number 50 50 that's extraordinary i can't believe it's been 50 episodes of me wandering around this allotment since I started way back at the beginning of lockdown. But what that does mean is that we are rapidly approaching vlog 52, which is gonna be a big one. And I feel like I really do need to celebrate it somehow, but I just, I can't think of a way. So vlog 25, I celebrated by doing the seed giveaway of my saved tomato and chili seed. But vlog 52, a whole year of vlogs, I really do feel like I should be celebrating it somehow. But if you've got any ideas, drop me a line underneath because I would be very pleased to hear them because I'm at a bit of a loss actually, other than just getting absolutely ratted up here in the sunshine with four bottles of champagne, which I'm not adverse to, but that's about as far as my thinking has gone. <laughs> So one of the other reasons that I've got less time is because I'm doing, um, I'm working obviously, but also I'm riding the bike to work. It's a good opportunity to uh, firstly learn how to ride a bike again because I haven't ridden one since I was about 12 and also to get fit uh, or get a bit of exercise into me, kind of cardio rather than just digging. And uh, yeah, so I've been doing that. I've been riding to and from work, but it's like an hour, oh, it's an hour and a, 40 minutes the first couple of times I did it but I've got used to the route now and I know where I'm going now it's an hour and 20 minutes when I'm going my fastest so adding an hour and 20 minutes on to each end of my day at work is kind of making the work days really quite long yeah so sort of where I would have had time after work or whatever at the moment that's not a thing <laughs> but I'm riding along the river like eight o'clock in the morning is absolutely beautiful so i'm not complaining what else have i got to say oh what an enormous success um asking you about bed shapes was i mean i'm really pleased with the d and i thought that was no chance that one was going to win and i'm just looking at it now 
it's just outside the shed and it's lovely and i'm so looking forward to getting some wild garlic in there It'd be quite nice to have some of that down here so what else did we get done yesterday uh loads really pleased to have got those bird boxes up although when i arrived this morning have a look what i found yeah i think we might be having to move that one but that cat is extraordinary like that big oak tree that i put the i say big i mean it's not a massive oak tree but it's very very tall and that's the one that i put the bird box on just behind the shed and she chases the squirrels up there she just runs straight up that trunk not a care in the world it's like she's just running on the flat and then she just runs back down again um yeah, so I do worry that wherever we put a bird box, it's not going to be that successful. But, uh, and I'm not expecting anybody to move in this year. I know that they have to sit around for at least a year or so for birds and rats to get used to them. So, yeah, but I'm pleased we got them up. And I've been looking at uh, getting some bird feeders up that end in the kind of the wildlife area. Yeah, so we've got loads done. It's so nice to be able to get the editing portion done of the video without kind of being like stuck at home in my office, not looking out on things like just being able to do that bit of editing up here in the sunshine with, you know, in the shed and looking out at all this stuff and mum can get on with stuff uh, while I'm working away in here. It kind of makes it feel more like the editing process is part of the gardening process rather than it being I get all the gardening done and then I've got to go home and edit. Like it makes the two a bit more interconnected, which uh, I'm really enjoying. But anyway, I don't have anything to cheers you with. We did the cheers right at the beginning of this vlog this time. So uh, all I'm going to say is I can't believe it's finally spring. I mean, today it could be midsummer, apart from the hat. Um, okay, so mum and I are just going to potter around up here. I'm going to finish off this video and I will see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you for the D voting. Thank you to everybody who voted for that, though, not just the people who voted for D. I really appreciate it. I had a huge response. And um, that's always amazing when you ask a question on here and then just people respond. It's just, it's, uh, I find it really amazing. Yeah. And the other thing, just before I go, if you have any ideas of what I could do for vlog 52 or to celebrate a whole year of doing the vlogs, let me know because I am at a complete loss. So anyway, if you enjoyed it, give me the thumbs up because the thumbs up means loads. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit subscribe and I will see you next week. Happy spring, guys. We made it. We have made it. Thank you.